Carlton McMillan. I'm an entrepreneur by DNA, and I'm CEO of Imperfection Gear. And this is my story. Hey, how'd that sound? Hey, this stuff is cool. December 24th, 2016 was the last day I had a drink of alcohol. The day right before Christmas. I remember it like it was yesterday. Because it was the, the turning point in my life. I was at the club. I was partying hard. And I, was, I remember screaming and laughing and dancing, having a good ass time. And then everything just went black like someone shut the lights off. I woke up because I was so cold. I had goosebumps over my entire body. The hair on my neck was standing up. I had no socks on, no boxers on. I was laying on a concrete slab. I was in a room that, that was like eight by eight. I was in an orange jumpsuit. The sink and toilet were connected. It, the sink was up on top and then there was like a silver box around it that made the shape of an L. And the toilet was, was the bottom of the L. And you also got your drinking water from the sink that was right above that. The, the window on the door, it was the size of a cup coaster that you'd have on your coffee table. I remember going up to the door and being like, hello, hello, and nobody ever saying anything to me for, it felt like forever. So I went and sat back down and I was trying to figure out how, how this happened. How did I get in here? I couldn't remember. I told myself, Carlton, you got to stop coming to this place, man. This isn't for you. And then after 60 long, lonely nights and days, and they let me out. They let me out of jail at 7 a.m. The Florida sunshine, the fresh air, the feeling of freedom was amazing. Nobody was there to pick me up, but I didn't care. I walked the expressway and the orange flip-flops they gave me that were a size too small, they gave me a bike week t-shirt that was two sizes too big, but I didn't care. I was walking, cars and trucks flying by me. I walked for about two miles and my cousin finally picked me up. I was so excited to see my cousin. And when I get in the car, he pulls over and he goes, cuz, we gotta talk. I said, cool, man, all right. He said, I said, what's up? He goes, bro, there's no house to go back to. He said, we sold what we could, we got evicted. All the excitement I had was gone. See, to me, because everything just felt so normal because I've done it so many times. I was never really affected. Or at least I didn't feel it. But this time was different. This time I really did want to change. And I, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I was not going back to Michigan. I was going to make it in Florida. I was going to, I was, no matter what happened, I was going to make it. So I still had the house key. And I go back, my cousin dropped me off and they didn't change the locks. I laid down on the brown carpet on top of a piss stain from, from Kahlua. It was my, my puppy, Rottweiler Pitbull Mix. And actually that stain was right underneath where my couch should have been. And I was getting bit by fleas on my legs and arms. Had me itching like I had the chicken pox. I landed a, I had no job, no money, no clothes. I didn't have water to take a shower. I had nothing. I was sitting in a house waiting for someone to kick me out. Or even worse, for the cops to come and arrest me because I was squatting is what they like to call it. Basically, I was homeless. Basically, I was homeless. I landed a job a few days later, working at a trailer park. And what I was doing was I was taking all the guts out, put them in the dumpster from the demolition. So I'd walk uh, about three miles there every morning and I would clean up everything that'd be inside of a trailer, the, the stove, the beds, the couches, the, the walls, the flooring, everything. And I'd walk about 100 feet there, dump it in the dumpster, 100 feet back for nine hours a day. Then I'd leave. They'd give me $60. Then I'd walk another three, three miles back. I would do all my shopping at the Dollar Tree. I would get only essentials, peanut butter, oatmeal, water, only essentials to survive. I ended up getting a gym membership. They had, it, they accepted cash, no contract. 
$40 a start, $10 a month. I paid it because they had a locker and a shower. The most important thing I wanted so bad was a shower. I would walk there after work as well, and that's another 2.5 miles. And then I'd shower, be able to think alone in cleanliness, and then I'd walk another two and a half miles back. I was laying, laying down on that floor again, on that brown carpet again, and something just in me just clicked. I was so focused on just surviving, not actually figuring out how I was going to get out of this situation. I had to use the bathroom, but I couldn't use the bathroom because the bathroom was filled with maggots inside the toilet, on the walls, eggs everywhere. It was disgusting. One of the bedrooms still had dog shit in it. There's gnats and fleas and roaches everywhere. It was... I had to handle all my business outside in the wide open backyard, despite if the neighbors could see me or not. Then I, I ended up getting a salesman job. I started selling cars and I was really good at it. I was averaging 15 cars a month. I got so good at it that I started managing my own location. And conveniently, this location was a three bedroom, two bath house. So when you walk up the ramp to the left is the office and then you go to the right take a step up, and then the second door on the left was my bedroom. It was only about a 10 by 10, but it was clean. I didn't have to worry about cops coming, and I had a shower. I was <laughs> big upgrade, that's for sure. I was happy. But through all this, it wasn't enough. Not that I wasn't grateful for what I had, but it just wasn't me. It wasn't who I, who I was. I didn't like the fact of working for somebody else. I didn't like that I was building a business for somebody else knowing that I could build it better and faster than he could if I only had the funds. See, being there by myself every day, I had a lot of time to think. I talked to myself a lot <laughs> and I answered myself just as frequently. But what I did was I was learning who I actually was. I started replaying experiences in my life like short films I started replaying when I was when I was seven years old selling baseball and Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon cards I started replaying that I would trade service my services for extra lunch because my mom couldn't afford to give me a dollar for an extra slice of pizza I was making money before I actually understood the value an entrepreneur by DNA then I started comparing all my other jobs I've had construction, roofing, salesman, what did they all have in common? I was good with people. See, when I was selling cars, I never really talked about the car. Sure, I knew the name, I knew how many miles, I knew where the engine was, but I didn't actually know about the car. We never talked about it. I'm not a car guy. But what we did talk about, we talked about experiences. Maybe they had a son or a nephew, um, a grandson, the same age as me. Um, maybe we've, we've had similar similar things happen in our lives. Maybe we came from the same state or even closer to the same city. That's what we talked about. We, we built a bond in a, in a short period of time. But people buy from emotion. And that's what we built. We built a bond. So I took the $143 I had in my pocket. And I bought 12 shirts. I was so excited. When the UPS guy got there, I was drenched in sweat. He asked if I just got back from a jog. I told him, no, bro. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And his eyebrows frowned down. He, his, he got wrinkles on his forehead. And he jumped back. He chuckled and jumped back into his uh, truck. I knew he was confused. But I wasn't. I'm going to continue to follow my passion for business and fashion. I will help other people find, find their passion. I will support the ones who have already found their passion. I will build a community. I will build legacy. No matter what, I will never quit.
I promise.